Hello folks, this is Margie Roy from 3dcuts.com and this is my tutorial for my companionship shadow box in the square format. This is a new illuminated shadow box from 3dcuts.com and it features a dog hiking in the woods with his companion. The download comes with both a female and a male companion and you can choose which you want to include in your shadow box. It is designed to go into an 11 by 11 inch shadow box frame which is available from Amazon and there are links to it on my website. Let's get started. Start by cutting out all of the parts. I do have a little bit of advice about the papers that I used in this particular project. I give some detailed information at my website shown here on the screen in the online tutorial there. You should check that out. But because people don't always do that, I do want to take a minute and talk about cardstock. You do need good quality cardstock for this project. There are some very fine cuts. I traditionally have always used Michael's Recollections cardstock, which I love, but I can't get it in enough quantities regularly. I'd go to the store and I could get five sheets and I needed eight. So I finally tried ordering online and I got the American Crafts cardstock in vanilla. I loved it. It cut much better and I was really pleased with it. So if you haven't tried this cardstock yet, I recommend it. Not all cardstocks are created equal and you really need to have good cardstock to be able to get these kinds of cuts. I used a lighter weight cardstock for the side brackets. Uh, that was something that I got off of Amazon and there's a link in the website for that as well. Now I have already cut all of the pieces. Here you'll do the same. Another comment before you cut. The side brackets have many, many dotted fold lines. I have learned that my machine cuts the dotted score line much more quickly if they are going horizontally. If I do them vertically, they cut ch -ch 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 -ch. Position it so it can cut horizontally if that's an issue with your cutting machine. Let's get started with the assembly. I add all of the embellishments to each of the layers of the shadow box. I start with the front layer, which has the two pine trees and the grasses and also a frame and a contrasting color. The grasses will get adhered right to the front. They match up in the bottom corners like so, and I'm just gonna glue them in place I use art glitter glue, which I have put into a smaller container with a tiny metal tip. There are links to these supplies on my website. I like using this glue a lot. Line up the corners, glue in place. This one goes on the other side. You do not need to glue the grasses it's kind of nice if they're left to flow in the breeze, although there's not much space for them to do so. This will get placed right against the glass. Then, the color of this piece is your choice. You should have an even margin of the ivory showing all the way around. I am only going to glue this one at the top so that it hangs freely and can expand and contract without warping inside the frame. Positioning is important on this. That's layer one. Now one thing, the blades of grass never cut absolutely cleanly. So any that are a little frayed at the top, you can just snip that off and make it crisper. 
Okay, layer one is done. We'll put that to the side. Now we'll move on to layer two. Layer two is made up of the background piece that has the two little tabs, the road with the person and the dog, the person and the dog, the birch tree, the back of the birch tree. Now there are two cutting possibilities included with the download. One is a man with a dog and the other is a female with the dog. You can choose the one that you would like and they are interchangeable. This background piece is matched up in the cutting file. Where these little tabs are matters in supporting these. So make sure you do the right combination. I will start by putting the birch tree to the side. And first, the man and the dog with the path get glued on. This does not meet the bottom. This aligns with the top. The tab goes behind the man's foot and it is about a quarter of an inch off the bottom. Turn it over, apply art glitter glue only to the road path. Apply a little bit to this tab. Line it up again with the mountains and that little support and press in place. That is the back support for the actual man and dog with leash. This one is slightly bigger than that one. Put the glue on the one that is smaller here in the back. And take the silhouetted man and dog and carefully place them on top. There we go. Now, on the back side of the birch tree, you are to apply this second layer. That's to give it just a hair more dim dimension and help it stand out and show up more clearly in your shadow box. This piece will get adhered directly to this piece with the birch tree being attached at the base here. I'm going to take this and put glue on the frame. Line them up. Glue in place and glue all the way around. The birch tree gets glue put on just the area that it's double thick thickness here. And we glue that in place. There is also the very tiny robin. And you can choose any branch that you'd like to glue that to. I'm going to glue it right there. We can also take one of the sets of grasses and put it near the base of the birch tree. There are multiple sets of grasses and they will go on this layer, but we're not going to put them on until after we've added the lights. We can use them to help us hide hot spots. Okay, that's the second layer. We'll put that to the side to dry and start working on the third layer. The third layer is the pine trees in the distance, and with it we need the mountains. Turn this over. The back side has three, well, two and a half trees on the right and two trees on the left. Turn this over as well. This will be attached to the back of this third layer. The bottom of this lines up right here and it gets centered between the two sides. 
It does not get glued here. It is um, positioned back a little bit. I'm going to take this, and you can use pop dots if that's what you have, but I buy foam weather stripping, and I use that because it's a little thicker and it's a whole lot less expensive. Uh, it's not as sticky, so I have to add glue to it, but um, two pieces there and one piece right here at the top of the opening, like so. I will take these off, add some glue to them to reinforce the adhesive that's on them, and put them into place. Okay, peel the backing paper off of all of these. Add more adhesive. And take this Line this edge up at the bottom, center the gap, glue in place. And now we have the distant mountains a little bit recessed. That's layer three. It's now time to start assembling the side brackets that will hold these layers in place. These side brackets, of which there are four, are used to hold the different layers apart from each other. I cut out a fifth, fifth one and I wrote some notes on it to help me uh, verbalize to you how this goes together. There is some good diagrams on the website on how to do this. So if you get lost in the video, go to my website and look at the pictures that are there. On all of these, you need to position them so that the tab is away from you further away from you and on your left-hand side. Okay, now I've got one like that. Uh, first, I'm gonna take the one with the, the numbers and show you how to fold it. The dotted fold lines are here, and I'm going to fold away from me. One goes back, two goes back, three goes back, four goes back. All the way up to the one with the tab. Turn it around, the same thing. The first one goes back, which is 14. 13 goes back. 12 goes back. And 11 goes back. So I have done those two ends. Here in the center, it gets a little more complicated. So five goes in this direction. Then, it comes forward again on the line between six and seven. Between seven and eight, it goes back. Between eight and nine, it goes back. And between nine and 10, it goes forward. When you are done with all of these folds, each of the sections that has a notch on it should be flat on the top and everything else folds towards the back. If you've got that, you've done this properly. And as another check, every fold got folded to the back except the one between rows six and seven and the one between rows nine and 10. That should help you make the same fold pattern. There's a great diagram on my website showing this arrangement and so if you get confused, look at that. This is how you are going to fold all four of these. So I'm going to take another one and repeat. One of them has the notch out of it. I still do it the same way as if that was not there. Let's do this to all four. Okay, all four of mine are folded plus my sample one. On the sample one, I will show you with the numbers the pattern for adding score tape. I like using score tape as my adhesive of choice for this kind of construction because I can leave the backing on and peel it as I need it as I'm building the shadow box. I get this at Amazon. This is the quarter inch width. 
I am going to put score tape on row one the whole way, press it in place, snip it. I'm going to put it on row six. Seven, nine. I'm just running it down the center of that space. Ten and fourteen. I am then going to turn it over and I'm going to take half inch score tape. You can use two strips of quarter inch if that's what you have and put it on this tab, which sticks out to the left. That's the process very clearly shown, demonstrated here of where you want score tape. I'm going to turn the camera off and I'm going to do that to all four of the layers for this shadow box. Remember the one with the numbers is just a demonstration to help you uh, know where to put the score tape. There, I have completed putting the score tape on all four side brackets. Every good craft project seems to have one tedious spot, and that was it on this craft project. It's done now. We can move on. I want and don't forget to apply the piece on the reverse side of the other tab. Okay, now it's time to fix the ends of all of these. This end is going to roll around and make a long rectangular prism behind the fat tab. So I'm going to peel this, roll it around, and adhere it in place. I have a letter opener, which is a great tool for helping to press. There is a nice square behind the widest piece on the side bracket. You do the same thing on the other end. This one folds around and gets adhered to the fourth side end to make another rectangular prism. It might be the fifth side end. Let me see. One, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's adhered to the fifth panel in. And again, you roll it in on itself. Take the letter opener, press in place. And this is how the side bracket looks. Repeat this on all four side brackets. Make the two end rectangles. I have now completed that on all four side brackets. You can see that the rectangular prism is complete on all of them. We start with layer two to build the shadow box. Layer one just gets placed inside the glass. Take layer two, place it on your work surface, Start with the side bracket that has the notch out of it. That one is going to go onto the bottom. The long prism will get adhered right here. The tab goes out to the left. All of the other three are the same, and you can position them right now to understand how they go. Tab out to the left, the next one, no tab, tab up. The next one, no tab, tab to the right. And the last one, no tab, tab going down. Placement of the tabs is on the edge farthest away from the design. It is possible to put them on this way and that won't work. So make sure you get your placement correct. I'm gonna move these two out of the way this is going to get glued right to the front with the quarter inch space on each side centered. 
It does not get lined up right with the bottom. It is a little further down so that there is enough room for this to fold around. If you get it in there too tight, it can't fold. I will peel the solid one here. I will place it a quarter of an inch from the edge, a little bit down below that and tap it in place. Turn it over and make sure that these can fold over and are, and that one's a little bit too tight, so I'm forcing it there and then I can adhere it. I've got equal spaces on either side. That's good. I am going to take my letter opener and make sure this is adhered well. I'll proceed to the next side. I will peel this edge and I will place that up against here, not exactly on the edge, just a sixteenth of an inch further out. It's down a little too far. Sure, this can still fold over. Now I will do the top one. Again, it's not the side with the tab, it's the other side. Going to line up there, center it left to right, tap it into place, make sure this still has enough space to fold. Good. Use the letter opener on it. And the last side. That'll go there, checking my tabs. You see, I keep checking my tabs. That's because I have put these together incorrectly and that has not worked well. Okay, now we have the first layer in our shadow box. Really, that's the second layer. The first layer is in the front. The next layer will be the pine trees, and it'll go back there. But we cannot put it on until we have started adding the lights to the front of the pine trees. You need to understand how much of this back land is visible. We cannot put any lights there. Just take a piece of blue tape that I'll take off later. I must stay below there. I must stay below there. I'm not pressing this down hard. I'm just making a marker. And I want to note where the figures are in the center. Four pieces of blue tape gently placed there. Certainly adding lights to the shadow box is an optional feature, but I think it adds just a lot of uh, stunning light to it and I recommend it. This set of 50 lights I get from Amazon. There's a link on my website, of course. These are remote controlled and they run on three batteries. This project has been designed to allow the battery pack to fit right here. I like this selection because, first of all, the remote control uh, is easy to use, but secondly, the three batteries lasts a very long time. 
and you don't want to have to always be replacing the batteries. Although you can, they are accessible. So I'm going to do this part with the batteries on because it's easier for you to see what I'm doing. And starting at the other end of the lights, let me unwind these and get to the other end. Starting at the other end of the lights, we are going to start taping them to the front of this layer. These lights are going to be behind the other layer, but we don't want to put them on the back of the other layer because we're trying to avoid hot spots. You want to tape them so that the lights are um, close to this back layer and always a good inch wherever you can below these blue markings. Now, here is where the dog and the uh, male companion or the female, if you're doing that one, is located. I want to be sure to have good lighting here and I want lighting to be spread across the entire area. I don't want all the lights in one area and they are about, I don't know, three or four inches apart. So this is gonna come out here. Um, I am going to take this and fold back the lights back and forth several times to make a row of equally spaced lights right here in the center. That one was a little too close, bend it back. There we go, and if I apply that right there in the center, I'll get good light going up there. So I'm going to take scotch tape and tape this together. You really don't want the copper wires or the lights to be popping out after you've assembled this. And these copper wires just seem to have a mind of their own. So um, you want to tape them into place. So it's gonna go here and I'm going to tape it down over here. Do not let this tape come up above there or it will be visible. And I'm gonna tape it down over here. And then I'm also going to tape this right into place, wrapping it down and around to the back. There is no hard and fast rules on how to do these. Your goal is to get an even spread of the lights well adhered to this panel. Also stay away from the outside uh, quarter to three eighths of an inch because that's where the side bracket is gonna go. So now I'm going to start just getting light in this area over here. Um, I'm going to use about 15 lights on this layer. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 are there already. Um, doesn't matter if it's 14, 15, 16, just in that range will help, will be about the right amount for this layer. So there they are, and I'm going to tape them down in place here. Bring them back over to the other side over here. and do another group on this side. And I'm gonna end up with it coming out the corner here, doesn't matter which side, but it needs to get to the next layer. Okay, I will take my first layer here and just do a quick little test. Line up my bottom corners. Do any of those lights show from the front? No, they don't. I'm seeing a hot spot there, but there'll be spaces, so we should be okay. I'm going to carefully remove my blue marker tape here. Throw that away. And now we're going to add this inside the stack. Turn it over. Oops, I forgot. This layer all the way around needs to be peeled and attached to the back side of the companion and dog layer. 
There's one side. Two sides. Okay, all the way around now I have adhered both sides of that first V that is holding this layer in place. Now I am ready to place the next layer in place. The lights go to the front. This gets positioned in here like so. I am going to start at the top. I'm going to peel this layer. And I am going to position this, careful, don't get it stuck before you're ready. Not right up to the seam, just a little bit below it. Centered. Like so. Sure, this will fold. It does, so I can fold it and press in place. I'm going to turn it, make sure that my wire can come out of this corner down here. The next side, peel it. Position it just a little bit in front of the fold. Start from the top and press down. Like so. Now go to the other side. Repeat. Peel the score tape. Don't let it get stuck. Position this end just inside of the fold line there. Pull this down so there's no wrinkles in it. Press in place. And now the two bottom ones. There we go. Oh, look at this. I got the tape of the lights on the back side here of the uh, landscape and it's squeezing them together. I don't want that. I'm going to peel that off and get that between them. Need to leave that space there. Okay, there's the layer three and I'm now going to peel these and squeeze them in place. As you go around, these tabs get folded to the inside. I am in the corner here with the light and I need to make sure that this can get through. The side panels should line up just inside of this last row of mountains. Okay, now these four tabs in the corner, you can peel each of them and attach them to the adjoining side. Here we go. We have three depths of our landscape, and this is a great shot of what the sides look like to support the spacing of these layers. It's now time to go on to 
the back layer, which has a lot of lights adhered to it. This is the back layer. It will get adhered to a piece of map board. I have cut a piece of map board 10.5 by 10.5 inches square. This is durable because it is what's going to support the battery pack in place. This notch needs to be cut out of the map board and you can choose to use your machine if it cuts map board. I'm going to do it by a razor, with a razor, an X-Acto knife. Sometimes things are just easier not using the machine. So I'm going to mark that opening and I'm going to cut that out. There we go. Your backing paper is going to get adhered completely to this cardboard. I'm going to use spray glue to do that, and I'm gonna go outside right now and spray that and adhere it. I don't like using spray glue inside. I'll be back in a moment. There we go, this is now adhered to my piece of map board. And now it's time for me to apply lights to the front side of this. Again, I am concerned about the location. I line this up here, and I'm going to try my blue tape trick again, and just put, it's hard to get to on this one, an indication of where that back landscape line ends. I'm a little high there, so I'm going to take it and move it down just a hair. That's so that I know I need to stay well below that, okay? Now, I need to turn this over here and I'm going to start applying the lights here. I would like to have a little bit of light going up each outside edge to be behind these trees here. So, again, I want to stay clear of the actual edge because that's where these brackets will be but I will take the first light, tape it down to get it here on my back layer, and I'm going to start spreading these lights around on this back side. They really don't need to go down low because all of the light back here gets um, filtered up through the top, so Again, I want to get a really nice spacing of lights all across here to give evil, equal lighting going up. Let's see, I want that one to go back here a little more. Now I have many more lights for this level, so I can really This will be my effort to get one up behind the pine tree. On um, Let's see, this is gonna be this side. So I want one about there. And then I bet I could put one a little higher. Let's see, behind that tree. You do not want the lights to be, I'm not gonna do that. I expect that'll be visible from side to side. I'm gonna bring that back down. If you can see the lights from the front, it's a real detraction. It really catches your eye. So I'm carefully working so that none of these lights will be visual, visible from the front. You see how I've got these lights nicely spaced all the way across here?
you want the plastic of the light to end right here at the edge of the battery casing. So these last lights I'm placing with that in mind. There, we've got a great disbursement of lights. I am now going to go into my dark bathroom, turn off all the lights, and look for hot spots or places where lights show that I can see from the front, and I'll adjust as necessary. Okay, back, for, back from inspecting. You're not gonna be able to see with the uh, studio lights what I saw, but I am going to take off this blue And right here where the mountains are a little higher in the back, I could have a light up here a little higher. There was a dull spot there. So I'm gonna see if I can find uh, a light. Probably go to the end here. And take one of these and bring it up into that area to get a light a little bit higher in that range. and then come down to my battery corner here. Now we need to put together the case for holding the battery pack. Okay, let's take this shape. The sides fold in. The last tabs fold out. Ed tabs fold in, and we get to put score tape on each of these end tabs. Let's see, I'm going to want them to go on the outside, so I'm going to put the score tape here. Four pieces. Peel these and assemble this box. There we go. Take my stack here. Make sure the battery pack fits inside of it. It goes, let's see, this way. Just a snug fit there. Okay, the battery box is going to go into this notch right here, like so. We are going to take score tape and put it along each of these tabs here on the outside. Peel one of these, place this in the space, and adhere it to the top. Do the same with the two short sides. Feed the wire into here. And this extra wire you want to tape to the back of the mat board just to keep it out of the way. I also take some blue tape and just tape the battery pack in place. This can be peeled off later when you want to access the batteries to change them. Before we put the stack into the shadow box, you want to look for hot spots. You're not going to see them with the camera here, but when I took this into the dark room, 
there were a couple of hot spots where I could see little white dots where the uh, lights were shining through. That's distracting to the eye. The, the file has come with a variety of grass clumps. These are for the purpose of putting over the area where you see these hot spots. And I'm gonna put these on this side over here. You do not need to glue the grass down, just the bases. It's okay to leave the grass free flowing and curl them out a little bit. I'm going to put three on this side over here and I'll put another one on this side over here. Like so. Now we will put our shadow box together. Okay, I've unpacked and disassembled the shadow box. Make sure your glass is clean before you uh, put it together. The insert comes out. That's an important piece of the shadow box. Note where the hanger is. Take the very first layer, which is the two pine trees, and put it in upside down, right up against the glass. Ooh, I've got a couple of pieces of paper in here. I don't want those there. And it looks like I have missed one blit square here that I didn't weed. Get that out. Then the wooden frame goes in and holds that in place. Now we add the shadow box stack. You take this, turn it over. It goes inside this wooden frame like so. You want the map board to be down inside it as well. Great. The backing that comes with the frame goes in. One of the reasons I like this frame is that these little twisty things get used over and over again as I put it together, check out the lights, take it apart, and it's really easy to assemble the frame this way. And let's turn it over and let's take a look. Isn't that terrific? We are now done and I hope you are pleased with the project. Check out my website at 3dcuts.com for a selection of other illuminated shadow boxes for you to complete. Happy crafting everyone!